So if you watch my two part series on why your photos aren't sharp and you find that your photos are still not as sharp as you think they should be and you're not 100% sure why, this video is for you. So let me know if this feels familiar. You return home from an incredible trip with amazing conditions. You begin reviewing some of your favorite photographs. You take a closer look only to realize what you thought would be your pride and joy image is nothing more than an out of focus and blurry interpretation of what could have been your major award. So if this happens to you and you're not sure what the culprit is, you'll definitely want to stick around for this one. And as I mentioned earlier, I recently posted two videos on this topic, which garnered quite a bit of attention along with over 1000 incredible tips and suggestions in the comments section. And I'd honestly be remiss if I didn't pass along some of these viewer suggested tips that were not part of the original video series, but most certainly should have been. So in no specific order, these are the tips that you all sent in that I think are definitely worth mentioning. Five are specific to handheld photographs and the final two are related to using a tripod that will help all of you avoid those soft and blurry photos and help you get those razor sharp images you're hoping for. So to jump right into it, the very first one, and I absolutely cannot believe that I forgot to mention this because I think it's probably one of the most important tips or one of the most important ways to get super sharp handheld photographs. And it's by enabling and using a some type of high burst mode. So you can set your burst mode on your camera to shoot either three shots or five shots. Some cameras can do seven, eight, or maybe even 10 shots of consecutive high bursts. And, and the beauty of this is that when you first press the shutter button, there's a pretty good chance that that very first photograph is going to be a little bit soft because you're pressing the shutter button and that introduces a little bit of camera shake. But when you shoot in a some type of a high burst mode, if that first one is soft, maybe the second or third or fourth or fifth image is going to be tack sharp because you're going to have that shutter pressed down. So that is a huge, huge tip. And like I said, I cannot believe I forgot to forget that one, but enabling or shooting in some type of continuous high burst mode is, a, is an absolute game changer. Now the second one, and this is also super, super important. Once again, can't believe I left it out, but it has to do with the way that you breathe. So what I do, if I'm in a scenario where I don't have a lot of available light, I have to use a longer shutter speed than I would really like to use if I'm hand holding the photograph, your breathing is absolutely critical. So what I'd like to do is take a, a big breath in, and then a slow breath out. And as I'm breathing out, that's when I go ahead and take my exposure. I've talked to various people in uh, different types of trades over the years, and they say that a lot of times your hands are the most calm or you are the most calm or the most still when you're in the act of slowly breathing out. So not necessarily, I've heard some people say, maybe take a, a big breath in and hold it and then take your exposure. I have found the most success taking a big breath in slowly letting that breath out and then while you're breathing out go ahead and take that exposure i think that's a great way to to keep as stable of a platform as you possibly can to get those sharp photographs now the third technique or third tip that you all sent in is something called a finger roll i've done it before in the past i don't probably use it as much as i, sh I probably should but basically what it is is when you have your finger on the shutter button and you press straight down a lot of times that can introduce camera shake just that technique of pressing straight down can be a little bit jolting on your camera body. But if you place your finger just next to the shutter button and then roll your finger on top of the, the actual shutter, just the side of it to press it, that is a little bit less of a jolting or jarring way to, to uh, enable the shutter button. So that finger roll technique is also very, very important as well. Now this next one is enabling back button focus. I have been using back, back button focus for years, probably, 80% of my photography career, I've always set up every single camera to have back button focus. And it has many, many, many different, um, I should say benefits, but one of the best benefits is the fact that you actually remove the focusing mechanism from your shutter button. So most cameras, when they ship to you, when you get them out of the box, the focusing mechanism is tied to your shutter button. So when you half press the shutter, your camera focuses, and then you press your shutter the rest of the way to take the exposure. When, when you enable back button focus, that half press no longer focuses your camera. You can assign it to a button on the back. So just by removing the focus from the shutter button is a good way to uh, alleviate those potential misfires and enable you to get very, very sharp photographs more consistently. Now the fifth tip, and this is the last tip associated with handheld photographs, and it's basically to lean on something. You know, I photograph in the woods a lot, 
around waterfalls, there's almost always some type of a tree or something you can possibly lean against, or sometimes if you're shooting low enough, sitting on the ground, but just paying attention, is there anything around you that you can lean your body or sit your body on to enable you to create a little bit more of a stable platform? So leaning or sitting on something is a was one of the most common suggestions that was sent in in the, that two-part series is to lean against something. And I think a leaning against a tree was the, uh, the most common one. But in, in shooting in a burst mode, your breathing technique, the finger roll technique, and navel back button focus, and leaning or sitting on something, those were the five most common viewer suggested tips on how to get sharp handheld photographs. And I think they were all absolutely fantastic and I should have included them in the original series, so that's my bad. Now the final two are the most common suggestions when shooting on a tripod, how to get super sharp photographs. And the very first one is to turn IBIS off on your tri when you're using a tripod. So turning in-body image stabilization off when your camera's on a tripod. A lot of times, um, IBIS and cameras, it's gotten a lot better over the years, but it's constantly searching for movement. So when your camera is not moving at all, when it's sitting on top of a tripod, a lot of times your camera sensor could be looking for some type of a movement, and sometimes it can create a somewhat of a soft pho photograph. So. I always turn off IBIS when I'm using a tripod unless it is extremely windy out and my tripod is already shaking a little bit. That's the only scenario I leave in-body image stabilization on or optical image stabilization on on my lens when I'm using a tripod. So, But generally speaking, if you're shooting on a tripod, turning IBIS off is a good best practice. And then the last one, and I can't believe I forgot to mention this either, it's a, it's kind of a running joke in the, uh, the photography community a little bit, but using a center column. You know, there's a lot of scenarios out there where a center, using a center column can definitely come in handy, but in most situations, a center column is definitely less stable. It's just one singular column with your camera resting on top, as opposed to when you're not using a center column, your ball head is, atta is uh, attached to the tripod and you have three legs extending out in different directions. So using a center column definitely has its, uh, its use cases sometimes, but it will almost always create a less stable of a platform as opposed to if you're not using a center column. So that is something to think about as well. But those are the seven most common viewer requested tips on how to get sharp handheld photographs or sharp photographs when you're, you're using a tripod. And those are all suggestions that I think are absolutely fantastic and should have been a part of that two-part series. I wanted to make sure I shared them with you all today as well. I spent a ton of time reading through a ton of comments and just kind of uh, get, putting together all of this information. And like I said, I wanted to share it with you. If you have any questions about any of the tips that you all sent in, please leave those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get back in touch with you as soon as possible. And if you enjoyed this week's video, if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And as always, I really do appreciate you carving out a little bit of time to spend it with me here today and I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.